troubleshooting. So again, hopefully the maintenance went well, but maybe the scale wasn't maintained or it's been out there a long time, whatever the case may be. Hey, we've got an issue. Let's figure out what's going on with this scale. Like every scale, you know, eventually you'll have some issue with it. So here are a couple of, uh, of things that, that we run into. So, and a lot of this is covered in the manual. Um, one of them, the first one here, number one, is no comm with sensor board. So that really comes up most of the time with a junction box. So that's telling us we're not communicating with the sensor board out there in the junction box. Uh, if a lightning strike happens, you know, or whatever, uh, you damage that communication cable. That's what, what that's telling us. So there's different ways to, to check that. We can check the voltages down there and at the sensor board, there's a few things we can do there. Um, so that's a really easy one to, to try to find out because it's telling us, hey, we have a problem already. Otherwise, we do just traditional load cell troubleshooting. Um, you can see in the manual, you can do ohms checks, millivolt checks, all those things. Oh, the millivolts are a lot easier because we can look at them right on the screen. No, you don't have to start out uh, tearing the box open and getting your meter out or anything. Uh, the speed sensor is very straightforward. I mean, 99% of the time, the speed sensor is either working or it's not working. So, and that's a good point. If there's no speed, there is no weight. It's, uh, you know, if, if the belt's running, um, but the speed's not working and they've got material on it, we're still gonna show no tons per hour at all until we resolve that speed sensor problem. So that's a really important factor. Uh, you know, sometimes once in a great while, if somebody gets hit by lightning, we do have a test mode that once in a while we'll turn on for them just to get them by until they get a new speed sensor, get the speed sensor repaired. But we don't like to do that that often. Uh, it, it's not a replacement for the speed sensor uh, at all, but once in a great while, we'll do that just to get it by for a little while. Um, then the angle, again, the angle sensor we very have very few issues with, but if, again, they damage the cable or something, you can easily look and see if the angle's way, way wrong. If it's pegged on 45 degrees or something like that, it's just completely wrong angle, okay, start checking the wire, maybe, you know, hit by lightning, whatever the case may be. Um, and then power issues sometimes will, will be a problem, especially on generators. A lot of our places, you know, they don't have line power. We're running off a generator. If they're firing the generator up and they're having some issues with the proper voltages coming out of there, you know, maybe it scrambles the scale or things like that will happen. Um, or some of these places just don't have that good of line power. Maybe we can tell them, you know, install an uninterrupted power supply or things like that to improve the power. Sometimes we're on a portable machine, it's running off a battery, the battery isn't charging, the alternator isn't working, different things like that will happen. Our voltage drops too low. So there's just different scenarios that we run into with power um, and various things. So definitely. I have a, I have a good question, Aaron, uh, and we deal with this in truck scales as well. Uh, if there's welding going on on the belt frame, is there anything they need to be cautious of as far as the belt scale is concerned? I mean, we've got the integrator, the grounding, and all that going on. Yeah, they definitely, do. you don't want to be welding, you know, right by the, the scale. You definitely have to have it properly grounded so you're not, you know, pushing all that voltage right through the scale. So that's absolutely a good question. You have to be very, very careful uh about welding uh around the scale that's absolutely the same as you're used to with truck scales so absolutely correct be very careful when you're welding um so aside from these basic you know troubleshooting like these hardware issues if if there's just something you're not sure of or like hey i've been messing with the scale i don't know what's going on the best thing to do is Take a bunch of pictures, take some videos of the conveyor, of the integrator, of, of what's going on. And then we also have a way to download data logs from the integrator memory that we can analyze and kind of see what's going on in the background. Um, I'll probably make a video of that process. It's, it's actually in our manual. It kind of shows where to go to download that stuff to a USB drive. Um, and I can you know, make a little more documentation about that because it's really, really nice. Then you just email all this stuff to us, and that's a great starting point for us to help troubleshoot some nagging issue. Like, boy, it doesn't seem like it's working as well as it should, or whatever. There's a lot of different things we can 
we can learn just by looking at you know pictures or a video or sifting through some data logs um you know that's where we like to start because that's going to get us to the answer more quickly than just you know a lot of times somebody will call and they're not at the scale yet and unfortunately we can't be we can talk a lot you know about things that can go wrong but until you're at the scale you have eyes on it or we can take some readings or whatever it's difficult for us to really come to actual answers um, until we get some feedback directly from the scale and in these in these days taking a picture and sending it is so yeah, easy. easy and a picture really says a thousand words so yeah. it it goes a long way yeah it's it's really really nice um, gets gets us to the answer much faster than we used to be able to um, so we've got, we'll just have, end with just one scenario that occasionally we, we run into this where, you know, obviously it's a scale, but we want it to be accurate, we want the customer to be happy. And sometimes they're just like, well, the scale doesn't, isn't doing what I think it should. The scale is not accurate. So the starting point there is, you know, find out why they think that, you know. So there's several scenarios. So one is, well, it's, going across another scale or they're loading into a truck and it's weighing or whatever so those are very simple we can get to answers pretty quickly because if we're comparing uh our belt scale against some other scale or whatever some other process that's weighed that's much better because it's easy for us to to narrow that down like oh yeah it's very repeatable but it's just inaccurate let's recalibrate it or whatever many more times though we're not doing that where a lot of times it's just like i know how much we can run I know how much we feed into our crusher. I know how much this, I know that. I've been here for 20 years. You know, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, that's fine, I get that. So what we don't wanna do is just say, sorry, customer, you're wrong. Our scale is always right. Um, Cause the customer does have some valid points. And I just had a case very recently that showed this. He was like, oh, I know we can run 300 tons per hour, but we're not, we're, go we're going like 260. Turns out the azure spacing wasn't measured properly. So when they entered it in, he fixed that and it was perfect after that. So sometimes the customer does have a really good feel for what they're doing. Other times it's just wishful thinking where they're like, we wish we could run a certain amount, but the scale is really dead on. So while we don't wanna, you know, we don't wanna distrust the customer, we just need to gather more information to understand what they're thinking, like why they think a certain way. And many times we can prove the scale's just fine, or we can find out something that's wrong that we can correct and make the scale look better in their eyes and make it more accurate. So, um, and if we can do a, you know, if we did a test weight calibration, then sometimes it takes a material test to go that extra step to say, yep, here's the material test. Yeah, we, Maybe it was a you know five percent difference or whatever we corrected with the material test. Great, it's perfect now. Those types of things happen. Um, and if we can't do a material test with a truck and a truck scale, sometimes we can even do just put some bags on the belt and run them across a couple like a two hundred pounds of sand or something. That's not ideal. It's it, it you, it's hard to get a lot of weight, you know, bags of sand and something on a belt, and then run them, and then they dump off the end, and they hit the ground and stuff like that. But in certain cases, that can actually be a really good test, because if you know, especially if the belt's really tight, or you know, we think there's a difference between the test weight calibration and you know the material that that they that they have, running a known amount of weight even if it's a couple of bags can go a long way to to helping the customer understand like oh okay maybe there is a little bit of a difference maybe i need to loosen the belt a little bit you know to to get a little bit more sag or whatever the case may be so just something we throw out there uh, just some way to get a, a known amount on the belt is is a great step forward but we always want to start from scratch and just check every one of those settings that we went through the test weights, the iron measurements, the angle, all the components are working, and we just work backwards and try to get to an answer. Okay. A lot of times you'll find out, you know, if it's an older scale and you start asking, well, okay, so it used to work. Yeah. What has changed from when it was working 
to now. So a lot of times you'll find out, oh, they did some maintenance on the conveyor. So maybe they changed out the belt. Maybe they put in some new idlers. Maybe they did something else that would have affected the accuracy of the scale or the calibration of the scale. So all it would need is just a simple recalibration and then we're back on track. So, you know, you know, that's a key question. Did the scale used to work if this is an older scale? And if so, then what has changed? You know, you kind of have to be a little, you got to put on your Sherlock Holmes hat and start asking some questions. Yeah. And, and that's another reason why we love Plant Connect is we can get a lot of answers out of Plant Connect as to what was the scale doing, what is it doing now. And that's another reason for dealers to want to use it so they can get some of those same answers before they go make a service call and they can, you know, really understand almost what's happening and actually even sometimes bring some parts along before they're actually going onto the site. So Plant Connect is wonderful for dealers as well as the end users. Now, I do want to okay. say one last thing before we're all done, but um, I do encourage everybody to look at our instruction manual. It is unlike most manuals. It's got a lot of pictures and, you know, it's very straightforward. And I feel like it's fairly easy to look through. Your eyes don't cross so much <laughs> as uh, other manuals I have looked at. So I do suggest thumbing through that. And you know you can get a lot from our manual. We just redid it. So um, I yeah, that's that's my one thing that I would like to say. If you have homework, uh, yeah. open up the manual and just kind of look through it. Great. Do we have any uh, any last minute questions there? Yes. If you have any last minute questions, I'll look here for a moment. I'd like to uh, I'd like to say something that we deeply appreciate. Uh, Colony and Aaron for their efforts today. How you see and hear them today is how they are every day. So you got the greatest support in the world. Uh, and, and this has been kind of our kickoff day for our virtual training for all dealers that coming on board and existing dealers. Of the 75 people we've had online today through two sessions, we've had 15 countries represented around the world and many wow. of you guys are on with us right now that is amazing and so we've had guys that are late at night or late in the evening from this morning we've got guys that are early morning from this afternoon in australia new zealand and uh, so we we definitely appreciate your attendance with us you should see two emails tomorrow as a group Number one will be an email that Colony is putting together with all the contacts and information that you require at uh, Beltway Scales to get all of this attention that uh, you've been given today to make sure we have quotes and uh, the products uh, purchased correctly. Uh, it's going to be super. Uh, and you guys did a great presentation, some input here from uh, some comments uh, in the uh, chat room. Also, you get an email with us for, from us for the video. Uh, that you can, uh, in a YouTube version, as I said earlier, you can give to your dealers or your other uh, technicians within the dealership or friends and family. <laughs> so anyhow, we, we want to thank you for being on. I would like Colony and Aaron to say bye and uh, to get, encourage you. And uh, we, we appreciate your attendance. Yes. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for sticking with us. It's uh you know, it's it was a good two hours, but I think, you know, n n this should get you started and um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're available. So um, email or call. Hey, I got a question that just came in and we're going to answer it. Can this scale be pressure washed and do we need stainless steel load cells for fertilizer plants? You can get a uh, like in Iraq, you can get a stainless steel version of this scale, correct? That's correct. Yes. OK. Super. Stainless steel. And as far as pressure washing, I mean, the integrator, we would definitely suggest uh, putting the integrator inside of another box to protect it a little bit more if it's going to be pressure washed like that. But generally, the load cell assemblies uh, are pretty robust. And yeah, if it's, a, if it's a stainless version, I'm not too concerned about uh, pressure washing um, on the side of the, of the load cell.